Good morning, everybody. Um, thanks for joining us today. I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Melissa. I am the customer support specialist for guided surgery here at Full Contour. Um, I'm happy to assist with any questions you might have for our guided surgery um, offering. Um, let's see, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we're excited to bring you this webinar today and discuss one of our new offerings for guided surgery, our bone supported guides. As we go through the presentation, if you have any questions, please type them in the chat box that you see on your screen. We have some time set aside at the end to review questions and answer those questions you might have. With me today to provide the information for our new bone supported guide um, is Dr. Daniela Plencia. Dr. Plencia is an implantologist and she's been with Full Contour for almost five years now. Dr. Plencia leads our guided surgery team with our other two doctors, Dr. Luis Gamboa and Dr. Jorge Madrigal. Dr. Palencia, thanks for joining us today. Let's dive into Bone Supported Guides. Thank you, Mel. Hi, everyone. Uh, good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are located. As Mel said, yes, we are super excited about this new feature that we are offering right now with Bone Supported Guides. We were waiting for this new feature to be launched for a while, and now we have it, and we are super excited to present this to you. So basically, this webinar will touch base on the workflow that we will be having with this bone supported surgical guides. Some steps in the workflow are very, very similar to um, any other type of, of, of surgical guides that we can decide, design, I'm sorry, <clears throat> within Implant Studio. So I'm gonna touch base a little bit more on the differences that we will encounter with this um, bone supported surgical guides. So let's start right with the workflow. So basically what we will be doing at the very beginning, it will be creating a new order. The same steps as a regular case. So whether if it's a tooth supported surgical guide or a uh, tissue supported surgical guide, we'll be uh, creating a new patient, a new case. And once we've typed the name of the patient, we are proceeding with the restoration details, which are going to be basically the same as a fully edentulous case, but like if we were working with the dual scan protocol. Now we are going to select the implant planning surgical guide for fully edentulous, then make sure that we select the implant and the surgical guide, whether if we're working on the upper or on the lower arches. A little bit, the, a, a difference that we encountered here is that for fully edentulous cases with the dual scan protocol, we are able to work with both upper and lower arches, but for this uh, bone supported guides, we will be working either on the upper arch or on the lower arch. This doesn't mean that you won't be able to send us cases to plan both for upper and lower, but we are going to be presenting you two separate cases. Once we've uh, specified the restoration details, then we are moving to the following step of the workflow, which as you can see is very, very similar to the other uh, workflows that we have within Implant Studio. So the difference here is that we are going to select bone supported, as you can see over here. So since at the beginning, we were specifying the restoration details for a fully edentulous case, we can go for either the dual scan protocol or the bone supported, which is the one that we are going to select right now. And the cool feature about this is that we are only going to need the CVCT of the patient. That's it. No radiopaque markers, no dual scan protocols, super easy, very straightforward. And we need to make sure this is something that we've uh, discovered uh, in the past few days that whenever a CVCT is taken and there, um, the patient bites over a bite plate and that bite plate appears in the CVCT, we are not able to proceed with the or with a correct surgical guide design. So this example that we have over here where the mandible is completely clear, no artifacts are on it, that is perfect. And that is what we are looking for, a clear CVCT where we can perfectly plan the case and therefore design the surgical guide. Another thing that we've uh, discovered is that 
even though we are not working with the dual scan protocol and we don't have a denture to follow the implant placement, taking into account that and what we love about Implant Studio, which is prosthetically driven, even if we're working with a single implant or multiple implants, we can actually, let's say, trick the software by taking the CBCT of the patient, but with just a regular denture, making sure that the denture is stable, that the occlusion is correct, and that you're satisfied and that the patient is satisfied with the denture. No need of radiopaque markers, but when the CBCT is taken with the denture, that denture will appear as a shadow, and that shadow will allow us to, to, to find the correct placement of the implant following that denture that the patient currently has. So we can actually proceed with the plan as if we were um, having teeth, as if we were planning the actual teeth in, um, in the case. So that will help us a lot. On the following step, once we've imported the CBCT, we are ready to um, start uh, correcting the settings or, 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 or uh, modifying the settings of the CBCT so that we can plan correctly uh, the implants and then design the surgical guide. This step is basically the same as what we have for either the tooth supported or the tissue supported surgical guides. So basically we'll be cropping the CBC data by using the blue control points that we have over here. And they will be reducing the size of the CBCT, basically making sure that you're working only in the area of interest and making sure as well that we will have a valid region. In this particular example, I have cropped it up to the uh, mandible because this is our area of interest. Once we are satisfied with the cropping and once we have a valid region, we can move to the following step, which is the definition of the panoramic curve. Basically, as I mentioned before, some steps are very similar to the other workflows. In just a moment, we'll see the differences. For the panoramic curve definition, it is determined automatically by the software, as you know from the other uh, workflows in Implant Studio. But if needed, the curve can be um, realigned. And this can be done by moving the occlusal plane over here. As you can see, this occlusal plane can be moved. And then on the uh, axial view over here, this yellow control points can be moved. And then you can go ahead and modify the uh, panoramic curve. Same as on any other plan or any other workflow, I'm sorry, in Implant Studio. Once the panoramic curve is defined, we can move to the following step. This is one of the first differences that we have with the bone supported surgical uh, plans, which will be the bone surface model. So basically, these two, I'm sorry, these um, two D views are going to help us evaluate the bone surface model quality. And now we are basically going to compare the model outline with the bone in the CBCT. And then we're going to navigate these different areas by using this control point in the panoramic curve. Basically, we are going to be modifying the bone density threshold and the whole closing diameter to make sure that the bone surface model that we are quote unquote creating will be matching perfectly the bone in the CBCT. Why? Because over this bone surface model is where we are going to be designing our surgical guide. So it needs to be as perfect as possible. So as you can see in this example, we have modified the bone surface model. So basically what we will be needing is modifying, as I mentioned before, the bone density threshold and the whole closing diameter to make sure that we have achieved this image over here or this um, alignment, let's say, between the 
surface model and the model of the, uh, I'm sorry, and, and the CBCT of the bone. We need to make sure that we have evaluated the quality of the bone surface model. Make sure that we are checking this box in order to move forward with the workflow. So basically we will be moving this cross plane here on the panel and then moving it from left to right, evaluating the orthogonal and tangential views, making sure that we have achieved a correct bone surface model. If by any chance we don't have a good quality CBCT and there are areas where even though we've uh, modified these two thresholds over here and it seems that we are not able to 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 correctly uh, um, design let's say or 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 achieved a correct bone surface model, we can go ahead and trick a little bit of the software at the end with um, a step in the surgical guide, making sure that on those areas where we didn't achieve a correct bone surface model, the guide won't have any problem seating. So we have ways to fix situations that we encountered whenever, as I mentioned before, we don't have a good quality uh, CBCT. Once we've uh, evaluated the bone surface model, the quality of it, we will be checking this checkbox and then we will be moving to the following step of the workflow. This step is the uh, nerve definition. This step only appears for mandibular cases like any other case in Implant Studio. This um, step is the same as any other case in Implant Studio or any other workflow in Implant Studio, the difference will be basically that when designing a bone supported surgical guide, we will start marking the nerve outside of the mental foramen. So basically, what we'll be doing is um, going over to the panoramic view identifying the mandibular nerve and then start drawing the nerve here on the orthogonal and on the tangential views. But the most important thing is that when we are drawing it, we need to make sure that the uh, mental foramen or the marking of the nerve is outside of the mental foramen. Why? Because when we start designing the surgical guide, the software will automatically measure a minimum of two millimeters between the edges of the surgical guide and the nerve. So we need to, let's say, help the software by drawing the nerve outside the mental foramen. This is the only difference that we'll encounter here on this nerve definition step, which is the same. You will need to start drawing it first the mental foramen and then go to the uh, rest of the mandibular nerve on both sides and once uh, the nerve is defined, you can move to the following step, but making sure that the drawing is outside of the mental foramen. Another thing that we need to take into account is that if by any chance the um, quality of the CBCT is not that clear, you can always enlarge the diameter of the nerve just to compensate for any potential inaccuracies in the nerve position if by any chance uh, you're not able to retake the CBCT. Once the nerve is defined, we'll be moving to the implant planning step. Now taking into account that the nerve definition only appears for mandibular cases. If we're working on maxillary cases, then we will be jumping directly to the implant planning step from the bone uh, surface model to the implant planning step. Now on the implant planning step, basically this is the same as any edentulous case. We'll be selecting the implants based upon the doctor's preferences, the implant manufacturer, the size of the implant, whether if it's fully guided or pilot guided. We need to make sure that we are always uh, placing fixation pins, we have a tripod stabilization that we need to accomplish just so that the guide will stay 
and sit firmly in the patient's mouth during the entire surgery. And the process of selecting implants is the same as any other um, workflow in Implant Studio. You will add the implants by clicking over here on any um, teeth on the implant uh, selector. And we will be choosing the desired implant brand based upon the doctor's preferences. Now, when placing the implant, it will be the same process as any fully edentulous case uh, for a um, tissue supported surgical guide where we will be um, placing first the platform of the implant by navigating on the um, on the panoramic curve and then going over the sagittal view the platform of the implant will be uh, placed first and then the apex of the implant just so that we can select the correct angulation of the implant and that will be done for any implant and every implant that will be uh, selected for the plan. The focus or, or, or the main focus on planning fully agentulous cases, whether if we're working for a um, tissue supported surgical guide or in this particular case, the bone supported surgical guides is to achieve the best AP spread possible. Now, if the prosthetic plan will be to restore the case with an overdenture or a hybrid, we can go ahead and place the implants between the mental frame and just so that we can prevent any potential denture fractures due to the mandibular deflection. And it is preferred as well if the anatomy allows to align, align I'm sorry, the implants parallel. And if we are not able to do so, then we can go ahead and proceed with the polymolar protocol where we have uh, the possibility to tilt the posterior implants so that we can increase the AP spread and reduce the distal cantilever. For these cases, if we don't have, like I mentioned at the very beginning, that uh, the patient can be scanned with his or her uh, denture. If we don't have a denture, we can always go ahead and place uh, the implants within the occlusal area of the bone so that um, the emergence of the implants are as even as possible. However, this is a, a, a tip that we found it very, very useful to use the denture of the patient, scan the patient with the denture, and then over here we'll be seeing the shadow of the denture and that will be super helpful to proceed with the placement of the implants. This is extremely useful and there are there is no need to, to proceed with any dual scan protocol, radio peak markers, and all the hassle that comes with that. As I mentioned before, we will be looking as well for the tripod stabilization, a minimum of three fixation pins, two posterior, one anterior, to help stabilize the surgical guide. If we we're working on the maxilla and if there is insufficient bone, we can always use the pad for additional stability, making sure that the shape of the or the design of the surgical guide is as a horseshoe, just so that we can have enough room to reflect the flap in the palate. Once we are satisfied with the implant position, let me go back just a second. Uh, as you see over here, the tools that we have are exactly the same as what we have in any other workflow. So you can always go ahead and modify the implant, the um, sleeves, you can group the implants, you can modify the safety zone around the implants, verify the distance that we have between implants, the angulation distance between the apex of the implants and the nerve. You can proceed with uh, abutments. This is a generic abutment tool that is super helpful. We can check the bone density. Taking into account that the bone density map appears at the end of the surgical report, which is super useful because we will get four views of the bone density, buccal, lingual, mesial, and distal, extremely helpful. We can take screenshots as well, the same as any other workflow within Implant Studio, super useful, every single tool that we have over here. Now moving to the following step, once the implants are positioned, everything is okay, we've 
followed the instructions of the planning doctor, we can move to the surgical guide design. So basically, and the difference between a tissue supported surgical guide where the denture will be transformed into the surgical guide over here will be designing the surgical guide. So as you can see, we have the surgical guide creation and then different steps. This one local guide offset is the one that is a little bit different. And this one appears for the bone support surgical guides. And in just a moment, I'm going to touch base on that. So for the guide design, basically what we'll be doing is over here on the uh, guide creation, we are going to uh, uh, click on the plus icon here to start a new patch. And then we are going to start uh, designing the guide. You could either click points on the bone surface model or just draw a line. And when the patch is closed, the guide will just start building automatically. Over here near the uh, mental framing, we need to make sure that we have at least two millimeters between the edges of the guide and the nerve. Otherwise, the software will give you a warning and then you'll have to redesign the area near the nerve. This is super important. As I mentioned before, we need a minimum of two millimeters. Once the guide has been assembled, we need to make sure also that within the main structure of the surgical guide, the support cylinders and the main cylinders are within that area that are completely covered both on the buckle and on the lingual, like this over here. So as you can see, we have a full extension on the lingual, a full extension on the buckle, and for this example, 2.1 millimeters from the nerve to the edge of the um, surgical guide 3.6 over here so the software will allow us to move forward with the plan otherwise as i mentioned before a warning will um appear we need to have as well a good distal extension just so that the guide will seat uh correctly and always always making sure that we'll obtain the best stability possible the best retention possible. And another thing that we need to take into account when designing this uh, bone supported surgical guides is the flap design. As I mentioned before, if we're working on the maxilla, we need to have a horseshoe shape design just to make sure that we have enough room to allow for the flap reflection. Once the guide has been uh, created, we have this step here sub-step local guide offset. So if you recall at the beginning of this webinar where I, uh, when we were on the bone surface model step, if by any chance we don't have a good quality CBCT and there are some areas where the bone density is not very clear, we can use this tool, the local guide offset to uh, increase the guide offset when where, I'm sorry, it is needed. Um, we need to make sure that when we are using this tool, it will be used for very, very little areas. Otherwise, then we'll have to go back to the um, bone surface model step and complete again the uh, bone surface model or recheck the quality of the bone surface model. Because if we start uh, playing around with the local guide offset all around the bone, then we won't have a, a good stability of the surgical guide. So basically, those areas where we see, like, let's say, like if we were to have a hole in here, what we will be doing is marking these areas over here. And let's say that we have another one on the other side of the arch, couple of areas tops, then um, we'll be marking them. We'll be basically like paint, painting the areas. And those areas are areas where we should have a bigger offset uh, from the bone or a bigger distance from the bone. Um, as I mentioned before, this is basically because we don't have a very good uh, quality CBCT. And 
we need to make sure that whenever we are using this tool, we are not using it in the entire uh, surgical guide or in the entire uh, bone surface because otherwise the guide won't have enough stability. And then of course, the surgery won't be a success. So if we need to use this local guide offset in, a, in, in many areas, I should, uh, I strongly advise you to go back to the bone surface model quality and reevaluate that. So let's say that we have just a small area over here where we needed to uh, um, increase the bone uh, offset, I'm sorry, the, the guide offset. So we do that, we can uh, use this, um, cross section here, cross plane, move it from right to left, and we can double check that we have a correct seating of the surgical guide all around the design, all around the bone. And once we are satisfied with that, we can move to the following step, which is the same as any other case in Implant Studio whether if we are working with a tooth supported or a tissue supported surgical guide, which will be the bars and windows and the ID tags. You can go ahead and place windows on the buckle of the cylinders just so that you can have extra room for irrigation, bars across the floor of the mouth or across the butt for stability so that you can wrap dental floss around it just in case to avoid the accidental aspiration of the guide, even though we have the anchor pins, but I mean, extra safety, is always uh, a good measure to take into account. And we can go ahead and add as many ID tags, add as many bars and windows as we want. As you can see here, we have the extension on the distal. For this example, we have the three fixation pins. And here we have the preview. We can check here that we have a correct distance as well. This uh, always shows actually the distance that we have between the edge of the denture, I'm sorry, of the surgical guide and the nerve, making sure that we have a correct distance. And once we are satisfied with the entire plan, we can move to the following step, which is basically approving the order. This step is exactly the same as any other workflow within Implant Studio. So basically, you can go ahead and click here, show surgical report, and then you'll find um, the surgical report with a brief summary on every implant that was placed, on every anchor pin that was placed. You'll find um, a bone density map. You'll find axial, sagittal, mesiodistal views. And then if everything is okay with you, you can go ahead and approve the plan and approve the surgical guide so that the STL of the surgical guide can be generated. Once we approve the plan and the surgical guide, you will be able to, or you will obtain this information. So basically you're gonna get this uh, icon over here and this will be the information that you are going to obtain. You're going to obtain the 3OXE file, the bone surface model. In this particular case, it is for the lower arch, which is this example. And you will obtain the drill protocol and the surgical report. Keeping in mind that the drill protocols, we have four drill protocols that are uh, complete. We have four different brands that we have the complete drill protocol. The other ones will have a generic drill protocol, but it's always, always super helpful because we'll find a minimum drill length and we'll find the information on every implant. And of course, again, the surgical report, but this one will come as approved since we already approved uh, the plan. So as you can see, we'll have this two PDF, the um, bone surface model, and as well, you will be obtaining the SDL of the surgical guide, which is super important. So basically, this will be our new feature. As you saw, it's super, super similar to any um, fully identical case working as if we were working with the dual scan protocol. However, we have a lot of advantages here. There are no needs of any uh, dual scan protocol, no needs of radiopaque markers. And as you saw, the workflow, even though it is very similar, there are certain areas 
that made that that will make this uh, workflow very specific to obtain the best implant plan and the best bone supported surgical guide. So I don't know if you have any questions right now. We are going to check them on the chat box. Let me see. The first one, it says, for mapping the nerve, I find that it can only go one way. So if I start outside the foramen once entering the canal, can I go posterior or anterior? But OK, how can you do that? So basically, you will be let me go to the um, nerve. Let me go back so we can show this to you. So basically what you are going to do, you're going to start drawing the nerve here on the, uh, or, or marking the nerve outside of the uh, mental foramen. You're going to draw the path of the mental foramen, and then you're going to move here to the tangential view. And you're going to work with two different views. The first one, the panoramic view and the tangential view. So you could either move this cross plane anterior and posterior and check in this tangential view. You can start drawing the nerve, whether if we have an anterior loop or if we will start uh, drawing the nerve posterior to the mental foramen. Another option would be to, instead of using this cross plane in the panel, we will be using just the tangential view and holding the control key. And then with the uh, scroll wheel on your mouse, we'll be moving it up and down. Oh, I'm sorry. We'll be moving it up and down. And then that will help you move the uh, visualization of this tangential view so you, that you can go anterior or posterior. I hope that that will answer your question on that. Second, I, it says, I missed the explanation of the bone surface setup at the beginning. Uh, yes, the video is uh, recorded, so you will be able to check the recording afterwards. David Schall, can you also design a provisional hybrid slots and for pickup after the implants are placed? Uh, Melissa, can you answer this question for him, please? Yeah, so we can design um, hybrids. They're not something that we're able to do at the same time as the implant planning surgical guide cases, um, but we are able to design the hybrids um, for you know implants retained. Okay, thank you. Now, about one's gone posterior. How can you go anterior to draw one nerve only? Can you elaborate on this question, please? Are you referring if we are drawing the nerve and we completed the, the draw up to the posterior segment, but if we want to go back to the anterior, how do we do that? Is that what you're referring to? OK, so basically, you'll have to start all over again. So you have to click undo, go to the mental foramen, draw the path of the mental foramen, check first the anterior segment if there is an anterior loop and then go back. Otherwise, then you'll have a lot of lines everywhere and it won't be helpful. So you'll have to click on do, start with the mental foramen, go to the anterior and then to the posterior. Any chance of designing a bone reduction guide with this module? Unfortunately, no. Right now, we are only offering bone supported surgical guides. In the future, yes, I believe that we will be having bone reduction guides. But for the moment, we are not able to offer bone reduction surgical guides. Do you have any other questions? We're here to help you as much as possible. You're very welcome. Anything else? Mel, I think we are ready. Okay, so how do I get the link for the video, Mel? Um, we will probably be posting that on the Full Contour website. Um, I'll double check and we can definitely uh, let you know. 
but yeah, we are recording it and we should have that available um, for everybody to view. You're Any welcome. other questions? All right, well, thank you everyone for joining us today and we look forward to supporting you with your guided surgery needs. Thank you so much for your time. And we are really, really excited to present you this offer. Um, as Mel said, we have just planning doctors on our team. So we are super excited to present you this and we'll have the best support for you guys. Thanks so much for joining us. Have a great day. Thank you. Take care. Bye.